All right, back again to show off NTR launcher. Um, this time, uh, Sassori has provided the video footage for me because this time I've corrected the uh, issues with the boot logo. So now there's no more flickering for the most part, and it's pretty much usable now. And this will be the, the the release I've been really wanting to make. This pretty much just brings back the classic DS boot splash that you see on a DS Lite and a DS, but on a 3DS. Uh, this launches carts. DS game cartridges, it does not launch ROMs. I need to make that clear because some people have gotten a little confused by how it works. Um, it's basically the, 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 the back end of Nitro Hacks without the cheat engine, so it's just a quick way of launching games or certain DS flashcards that won't otherwise work with a, a Stage 3 launcher or Stage 2 launcher. I've seen a couple flashcards be bootable as a result of this, but a lot of them a lot of flashcards will just work better from uh, one of the other launchers, but it's uh, I always welcome people to test to see which flashcards this is able to boot. Because um, some work better when launched like this because it's more direct and it has the best compatibility. It does. I do know that only the alt build will boot my R original R4 and DS Extreme is not bootable with either version. I think the DS Extreme is not bootable because it doesn't dump correctly from current uh, ROM dumpers and whatever issue that causes that is probably also causing an issue with it not working with this. The only ROM dumper I've seen that dumps the DSX stream correctly is NDS Backup Tool by Rudolph, but that's closed source and that guy hasn't been in the scene for years, so there's no way we'll get the source of that, sadly. Maybe one day we'll find out why these old flashcards don't dump correctly, because there's a few that do that. There's the R4 SDHC, some versions of that cart, I've heard people not be able to dump them correctly. I've seen ROM dumps that have the same issue with as my DS Extreme. So there you go. I'm going to show this off now. Yeah, yeah, Sasori did this video in the wrong order. He intend I intended him to show the game first, but he showed the error screen first. Uh, whatever. I'll just play the middle of the video first and see back to the beginning. So I'll show it launching a game. It's going to have the, the boot animation and the uh, little boot chime. The alt build has a DSi version of the boot screen that activates if in DSi mode. I don't think I, uh, it doesn't cur currently work correctly in TWL mode though, but maybe in a later version I might fix that. But right now it's just there in case I need it. But it's, but for now all it's going to do is play the DS boot splash animation with the jingle with it associated with it. As you can see, it's a pretty much a, a seamless transition to the <coughs> to the game. Old, the prototype I was working with, the bottom screen kind of went black for a few seconds before the game booted. It seems to have gone away right after I implemented the Max Mod system, the, the back end that allows me to play the little boot jingle. Now because this is basically Nitro Hacks without the cheat engine, any game that didn't work with Nitro Hacks won't work with this. That's basically it. Yeah, that's how it's been just auto boots the game instead of using cheat codes. Hopefully they play the error screen now. I think Fraps uh, didn't stop the video in time so the uh, video player exited full screen. So now I'm going to have uh, some editing to do to fix that. Except the mercy files now. As you can see, there's a cartridge not found error. The, the card reset code I have for this does not work the same way in Nitro Hacks. For whatever reason, cards don't edit if I launch this without a game inserted. Um, in Nitro Hacks, if you don't have a game inserted, it'll wait for you to put one in. But I did that the same way in this program, and it doesn't work for some reason. It'll, it'll, it detects the cartridge fine, but it just fails to edit the card after you do it this way. So for now, there's just going to be an error message. So you program without a cartridge is going to show that error screen auto exit after you hit a button or touch the touch screen, which is another new feature. Um, before, the program just simply sits there and hangs after on the error screen once you encounter the error, but now as a result of the max mod ARM7 code, I guess, is what's causing it. So if the program exits, if the ARM9 um, exits without doing something, ARM7 shuts the program down. and does a soft reset. On, on a DS Lite this would cause it to power down, but that functions differently on a 3DS. Instead it will just exit back to home. Lane. 
So I've introduced a, pa, uh, a button wait sequence in the uh, error screen where it'll display and then once you hit a button or touch screen uh, it'll, it'll finish the animation which is basically the fade out and then it'll auto exit so that's a new feature as well. So you don't have to manually close the program anymore. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, the alt builds and the normal build will be available on GitHub and the uh, as long as well as with the compiled binaries, of course, the source code will be up there too. So uh, be sure to check that out if you want to ever bring back that classic boot splash.